Chiang Mai Mung San San, Mechai Kong Gan, so Chiang Mai Creative City is not a project, that's what I'm going to talk about today. My name is Martin Mensky Stalin. I'm from Chiang Mai. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not really from Chiang Mai as you just guessed. I'm from Hamburg in Germany. And you might ask, why am I here up on stage and not um, one of my colleagues from the Chiang Mai Creative City Committee or any other volunteers that are working with Chiang Mai Creative City? Well, they're actually sitting amongst you, some of them. But what's the real reason I'm here? And the real reason is that I'm a reflection of what Chiang Mai does to visitors. What, when people come to stay in Chiang Mai, the charm of Chiang Mai makes people want to do something for the city, to play their own role in the development of the city, do their little thing, a big thing, whatever. And so they do things beyond their duties, beyond what they have to do. And that's the real reason I'm here today. And also my colleagues who, with their own means, and you come here on a Saturday to be here and share the vision of Chiang Mai. Martin Luther King said he had a dream. We say we have a vision for Chiang Mai, to develop Chiang Mai, to develop the economy, to create jobs, to create new opportunities, using a path of development that is sustainable and just for all. Chiang Mai, this city of 700 years history, rich culture, diversity. I'm sure that many of you recognize the images in this slide here and have been to many of the places. From the mountains, the misty mountains, to the forest, to warm up coffee, to salad concert, to coffee shops, the walking street, Niman Art Gallery Parade, the temples, and many other things, ivory and so forth. So it's a true diversity. And um, the diversity is really, really rich. When you look at this picture, even in the old city, this is the result of a survey done by the Tamasad City Research Unit and TCDC. They walk all the streets in the old town. And I think this picture, the color in this picture, gives you an impression of the diverse entrepreneurship, creativity, and range of things that are happening in the old city of Chiang Mai. But there is more to Chiang Mai than the old city. Did you know that North and Thailand biodiversity is probably the highest amongst all regions in Thailand? Did you know that 50% of Chiang Mai University is dedicated to medicine and life sciences? Did, do you know the word camped? Did you know that there are over 17 foreign representations in Chiang Mai consulate? Maybe you did. But did you know this? This is the result of me spending two hours in an afternoon searching the internet. I wanted to see and I wanted to show how many new media, digital content, IT and software firms there are in Chiang Mai. Two hours, this is the result. I'm told that actually the real number is about 200. I was also told that if you walked down Iman Himan Road and visited the cafes and asked for help with a digital content or web design um, project, you will end up with dozens of freelancers able to help you. IBM chose Chiang Mai as one of the few cities in the world to be part of their Global Smart Cities initiative. Very few cities participated, and Chiang Mai was one of them. So this shows the true potential both in existing industries and also in, in new ones. The Americans saw this potential and organized three conferences last year, and they said, you could learn from Florida and from Austin. And we said, why Florida? Well, Florida is interesting. It's a state in the US that is rich in agriculture, Tourists like to visit it, and also elderly people like to retire in, in Florida. And it doesn't have much of a manufacturing um, industry. Sounds a bit like Chiang Mai without the history, doesn't it? So, in Florida, the universities and the private sector associations got together, and they said, we need to create new opportunities. So they developed the Florida High Tech Corridor to attract new investments, develop their talent, and, and attract industries that kind of are compatible with, with what uh, Florida wants, not, not um, environmental damaging kind of industries, etc. Austin, 
now a global capital of innovation and creativity. 40 years ago, it wasn't like that. 40 years ago, Austin was a normal city. But the stakeholders in Austin got together and developed and enabled the development of talent and they attracted investment. And over time, Austin developed into a city with many high-tech companies, but also creative talent, a music scene, many artists, I like to, like to uh, live and work in, in Austin. So these are examples that we can perhaps learn from in Chiang Mai that provide a new perspective on the development of Chiang Mai. There are opportunities, that there are also challenges. You all know about the air pollution, the traffic jams, waste, etc. But what about the economy? Those issues are important, but if you don't have a prospering economy, sometimes it's difficult to tackle um, those issues. And I borrowed a slide from the OKMD, the Office of Knowledge Management. And they surveyed Chiang Mai some time ago. And you ask the question, this shows the gross provincial product against national product. And should a city like Chiang Mai, capital of the north, second largest city, second most important city in Thailand, education hub, strategically positioned in the greater Mekong sub-region, should a city like that or province be in the bottom left corner of that? We think not. We think if you combine that with narrow economic structure, lack of job opportunities for the over 100,000 students, there's something that needs to get done. Now, we don't think that Chiang Mai needs to be up at the top right. Maybe that's a development path we don't want. But we think, you know, this is also not really where it should be. So we went to the governor and we said, we should set up a steering committee to develop Chiang Mai Creative City and generate new ideas and unlock the potential. And we said, what do you think? Do you want to lead this? And he said, no, I think you should lead that. Let's make it bottom up. But I would like to join you. I would like to listen and I support it. But the universities, the business associations, and even individual members are going to be part of this committee and then we work together. So it's a voluntary entity. We didn't have funding in the first year. And it's a think tank, a catalyst, and a networking sharing platform. So how do we do things, and what do we do differently, perhaps, than many previous projects? Well, first we need to think about what do we mean with creativity. We consider creativity to take different forms and shapes. One, of course, is cultural and artistic creativity. And Chiang Mai has a lot of that. But there's also scientific creativity. A researcher working in a lab, working on a problem for years, and suddenly he has a new idea of how to go about it, and he gets to the breakthrough that has eluded him for a long time, and, and suddenly it works. Or an entrepreneur who looks at the way a business is run and says, I could do this differently. And then he is able to compete on different terms, blue ocean and those sort of things. Um, so that's economic creativity. So you have different forms of creativity. And that is really important. Particularly it's important when we think about economic development. Are we talking about the creative economy being the, just the aggregate of the creative industries like film, music and those? Or are we thinking about an economy of creativity where creativity also supports sectors such as food, agriculture and tourism? And then if we add the creative city aspect to it, it's also about urban development and social development. So in Chiang Mai, for Chiang Mai Creative City, we have kind of our own mix or umbrella under which many different concepts and projects and sectors have space and, and we generate the ideas and, and provide a, a think tank for that. How did we get started? We started with a local competition. We said this is a good way of getting people to participate. So um, ultimately we selected a logo that looked closely to this. Not quite. But this, it, it answered, the concept was right, it answered an important question. Are you going to change Chiang Mai, a lot of people asked. And we said, this logo answers the question, it says no, because it's a city walls. A city walls reflecting the long history, the culture and the strengths of Chiang Mai. But the colors reflect creativity, the twist in the middle reflects innovative development, dynamic development. So we developed that. We also, we did strategies and we do roadmaps and project proposals and budgets for our members. But we said, we also need to do small things. We need to close the gap, bridge, and connect people. 
And um, we, we looked at, we found one concept or one um, uh, group of people that are running creative mornings in New York. Actually, uh, monthly briefing sessions that are also run in several other cities. We felt too small to ask for the license. So we call ourselves Creative Coffee. And we organized several creative coffees around um, art for urban development, green development, protecting trees in the city. And we have other ideas about growing more uh, trees in the city. So I was interested in the previous speaker's presentation. I think that can also be done in urban areas, not just in forests. And, and many activities, some are, some are organized by us, and more and more are organized by others, and we sometimes get involved and support them. Not all of them are about the economy. Sometimes uh, they're nothing to do with the economy, but we know that's also important. You have to have the creative economy development, but you also have to have the, the so-called creative milieu, the creative ideas and, and, and atmosphere in the city as well. So we, we do our small bit to support that. What are the challenges? Of course, you know, Chiang Mai and many other places in Thailand, Thailand has seen many projects and committees and initiatives. Well, we hope to do things a little bit differently by focusing on enabling people. Um, the most important thing is that, that organizations start to work together and, and step up, take the initiative to do something for Chiang Mai and improve things. So the universities, they need to focus more on the needs of industry and open up to industry. Um, the industry, the companies, they also need to open up a little bit to the universities. So all, everybody needs to you know, move a little step closer. And government agencies, government plays an important role. It needs to make the sort of right sort of investments. And we're not always seeing the right sort of investments yet. Um, they, don't, they sometimes don't have an impact, they're too short term and so So that's important that they make the right investments. And, but then they, they step away and enable, let go, don't try to do it. And the national government, uh, this is quite a young, young crowd, um, but um, you know, please pass on. You know, the national government, you people in Bangkok, you can help Chiang Mai by, by communicating the message about the opportunity in Chiang Mai because many policies are still you know, defined in, in Bangkok by the national government. We can't do much about many things in Chiang Mai. So we're trying to develop big plans, but also have smaller ideas that we can do ourselves. And we think there's hope for this idea of working together. Again, I brought a slide from the TCDC and the Tamasat Research Unit. They did the survey in Chiang Mai uh, over the last six months, and they walked around, and one of the sectors that they analyzed is the IT sector, the freelancers. And they asked the freelancers, how do you work together? Now, Chiang Mai, the freelancers work at home, in the universities and in the coffee shops of Niemann. So they uh, distributed all over the place. But amazingly, 48% of them said we work together as teams. And even more astonishingly, 7% say we work as teams of 20 people. You know, again, suddenly comes a TOR or an opportunity comes in. People organize themselves, 20 people or more, together against the tight deadline to deliver a project in a very competitive international of, of, uh, environment. So I think this new generation chose the stakeholders of Chiang Mai, you know, the business associations, local government agencies, universities, the way that you can work together, um, and you must. One other aspect that um, um, we embrace in the Chiang Mai Creative City concept is marketing. We feel that not enough marketing is done for the individual regions and cities um, like Chiang Mai. So since we don't have budget, we rely very much on in individuals and volunteers to organize activities. And um, somebody said, I will design the poster for you. And somebody else said, um, I will print it for you. And somebody else said, UNESCO is coming to Chiang Mai. I will do your billboard at the airport for free because I like the idea. So when uh, UNESCO came to Chiang Mai to talk about joined the UNESCO Creative City Network, there was a huge banner, uh, billboard at the airport. We didn't pay for it. Somebody thought it was the right idea, right? And uh, today we got really excited. Somebody posted on Facebook uh, a big billboard at the airport. But he said, that's an idea, not yet. But maybe we do it during the, during the BOI fair. In November 2011, there will be the BOI fair. And we said, that would be a good timing at the airport to say, Chiang Mai Creative City, invest now. <laughs> that platform is so interesting to us. 